Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to discuss about the integration procedure, HTTP action and remote action. So in order to make you understand about these two action, I have created one integration procedure. So if I go back to my org, this is my org where I have created one integration procedure. Inside this integration procedure, I have used HTTP action and remote action. So first of all, you should know that what is HTTP action. So, so the integration procedure, if you wanted to communicate with a third party system, if you wanted to do a call out through integration procedure, and basically do some basically post action delete action to the third party system like sap adobe any other third party system then basically in order to do that execution we use http action to basically communicate with the third party system and remote action we use when whenever you have to call an apex class from integration procedure then we use a remote action so basically this is http action uh initially i have added one set value where basically i just put some random json you can see this is just J json that i wanted to send in the request so this is a json that i'm sending this is a request json and this is http action so i have dragged this http action from this left side panel so all of the actions whatever the element or action you wanted to drag and drop you have to drag from here to here so i just drag http action and inside the http action you have option to provide the name credentials so i created one name credentials so in Salesforce, basically you can use name credentials to provide the endpoint. So basically endpoint where you wanted to send the request and you can also basically give all your credentials. So that means you don't have to expose your client ID, client secret on code or any configuration. The name credential is the safest place where you can store your username, password, client ID, client secret. And you can basically also choose the configuration about type of authentication you wanted to do with your integration. So all the endpoints credentials is there in the name credentials. If I go to the name credentials, you can see this is a URL that I wanted to hit okay let's talk about the url first so i have created one mock api this is a this is a basically website through you can create a mock api so i have basically created one mock api called ip test dot free by bceptor so this is the mock api and if i go to edit this mock api i have added one path so this is the path of this mock api and whenever it's if someone will hit this API and will pass this path and basically choose this method post, in that case, I will the, that person will be getting this response. If I will hit that endpoint and will pass this path, then in that case, I the person will receive this response. This is the stub response. All right. And the response header is this, and this also will return the status quo as in 200. So I configured one name credentials where I have provided this path, I created one external credentials, where in the external credentials, I choose no authentication required because this is a stub, in, a stub uh, API. So in the stub API, you don't require any authentication. So that's why I created one external credentials inside the name credentials, where I have choose no authentication is required. And I also created one principal. Again, since there's no authentication required, you don't have to create any username and password you don't have to put any username and password but yeah you have to provide the authentication of this principal to your system admin now if i go back to name credentials after you have created your name credentials external credentials by cho after choosing the no authentication and parameters and assigning that pa those parameters to the profile who wants to run the integration procedure you have to do one more thing which is this this is very important under the allowed namespace for call out, you have to provide the namespace of your Omni Studio. So basically, some some of the Omni Studio license have Omni script or velocity underscore INS. Okay, so based on the namespace of the license you have, you have to provide the namespace. All right. So this is how you can do the configuration. Now, if I go back to the integration procedure, this is the integration procedure. You have to drag and drop the HTTP action. This is the basically path, HTTP path. So this is the basically the path that I have to provide. So this path I have provided here. And the endpoint, the endpoint is coming from this name credential. This is the endpoint. Okay, if I, if I click uh, paste this, and if I pass this, so basically, yeah. Um, one second. So if I copy, Based. Um, so you can see this is what basically we are getting right, but I think this is not the correct. 
kudos um, yeah so we are getting this 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 path we are, we are getting this path because this is the post section we are not getting the response so basically in order to get the response you have to do the post request this is not a get request so that's why it's showing that we get to see you here by the way this configuration the request path and create a rule rule for it because we i'm not provide passing any request so it, i'm just getting the general response but here if i go back to my integration procedure and http action you can see this is the name credential i provided and i'm, I'm using the post method and in the request i am passing so basically in the request i am passing this set value element so under the set value element i have added one request and under the request i have added one json to see the json you have to click edit as a json and here this is the request that i'm sending so i've given the reference reference of set value element colon request so set value element one colon request and i'm passing as a request one so if i basically click preview click execute and if i go back to http action so you can see we have received the response this is the response and this is the same response that I have, we have configured, okay? So let me refresh it again. So we have received, so we have received the same response. You can see the ID one, ID two, ID three, the same response we have received, ID one, ID two, ID three. If I hit it again, okay, if I hit this again, and if i show you so this is the request that I, we have received right you can see this yeah one second yeah so this is the request we have received right from the salesforce so this is the request that we are sending and this is the response that we have sent it so this request can you see account id 0 xxxx this request is nothing but this request is nothing but we are sending this request right request one we are sending this account id actions all of these things is a request we are sending as a request body so this is how basically this b chapter is saying that for this particular path we received this request and we have sent it back this response so the same response we can see here in the http action one this is the response which we are receiving right and the request that we have sent it is this the request one and the same thing we can see here this is a request that b sector has received it apart from that this is all about the http action after that whenever i'm basically sending the request i am also storing the response that i'm receiving for the third party system to a particular object which is an integration log okay so i have created one custom i have created one custom object which is called integration log you can see and i have created one field called payload json so whenever i'm hitting whenever whenever basically this integration procedure is getting involved whatever the response I'm getting from back from the third party system, I'm storing that response here in this object and this field. And in order to save this value, I'm calling one Apex class and the Apex class name is handle logs. Okay. So I wanted to make you understand how we can call the integration process, how we can call the Apex class from the integration procedure or any Apex class from the uh, Omniscript as well. So even if you're using the Omniscript and you wanted to call the Apex class, you have to use remote action. So if I click here and go to developer console, I will show you this class, which I am calling from this remote action. So it's taking a longer time. So control, oh yes, it's already open. So whenever you basically calling any class from integration position or omniscript from the velocity you have to implement one interface called velocity open interface 2 and this is the namespace and then you have to create one invoke method so this is like a normal structure you can get it from the google <laughs> so this invoke method is in, in in this invoke method we are passing the class uh, the method name so you can see this is the method name okay we are passing this method name and whenever this matter method name is coming from this remote action it is executing this method and this method have three parameter input map output out map input out map and options so in 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 map is nothing but this is basically the map input map we are passing so we are passing this send json right this send json so this will come under in input map if and 
if you wanted to send something additionally so you can see this addition yes or no i'm not sending anything but let's suppose that i want to send anything additionally here so this will come under out map and if you are wanted to after a completion of all of your logic you wanted to send something you wanted to return it right then in that case you have to use options so options will basically pass the value back to the indication positions so once this remote action will complete whatever the out map you have configured here this will come here in the indication procedure so that's why whenever i'm hitting this so okay inside this method you can see that i'm getting i'm passing so in the remote action i'm passing the request right i'm passing http action request so basically http action one is nothing but the response that i'm getting on the third party system so the same thing i'm passing to this this method and this method is basically taking the value from input map because i said that whatever we are passing as an send json path it's coming under the input map so we are taking all the values from input map and we're storing it as an object and then we are serialize it and passing all the json because this field is nothing but this is a text text long text field which is like more than 13000 characters you can store i think more than that even more than that so basically we are just serializing converting the object into string and passing to this payload so that's why when i'm clicking query so all the json this is a whole bunch of json so it's getting stored under this field right so we are storing whatever the response coming from the third party system this is nothing but the response right this is the response create an endpoint to the preceptor create an endpoint to the preceptor one so all the response we are storing in the salesforce so this is the object we have taken this field storing it and inserting it that's it and this is the exception and again after that we are passing this field to uh we are passing this object to indication procedure after the process so if you, again if i go to preview click execute and if i click to remote action one so this is coming payload json right this is payload json is coming from this method output map so you can see log record so it's coming under the log record json so this is a log record so log record is coming and inside that all the bunch of the object this integration log we're passing this log record right this log record is nothing but the integration log object record after inserting so this is it about this video um if you are interested to watch some more videos comment down to this video comment down uh, to this video and then uh, i will try to make that video and don't forget to subscribe this channel thank you